Alrighty, I want to welcome everybody to today's webinar. My name is Thomas Wood. I'm the Director of Trading Operations at ValueCharts.com. I also host the Futures and Forex Trading Room. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about bonds. I'm actually going to give you some really good information that you can take away from the presentation today and apply your trading tomorrow or Monday um, right away because I always want to make sure I give you some really good knowledge if you're taking time out of your day to spend with me. So I'm going, to, I'm going to be teaching you some good stuff that can apply not only to bonds, but to any market um, in general. But it, it works really, really well in bonds, which is one of the reasons we're going to be focusing on it today. Also, I want to be telling you about how you can get into a workshop at the end of the month. We're having a workshop for those of you that really want to learn, take the next step, and really dive in head first and learn how to trade bonds. At the end of the month, we're having a workshop that's supposed to take you basically from bond trading zero to a bond trading hero. Okay, and I'll tell you at the end how you can get signed up for that. For those of you that are ready to move forward, take the next step, and continue your education. But with that being said, uh, let's go ahead and jump in um, both feet first and, and get started here. Now, before we get to the fun stuff, we obviously have to go through the risk disclaimer. Uh, trading or investing carries a high level of risk and is not suitable for all persons. Before deciding to trade or invest, you should carefully consider your investment objectives, level of experience, and ability to tolerate risk. This content is subject to change at any time without notice and is provided for the sole purpose of education and assistance in making independent investment decisions. ValueCharts.com is taking regional measures to ensure the accuracy of the information contained herein. However, ValueCharts.com is not guaranteed its accuracy and is not liable for any loss or damage that may result directly or indirectly from such content from an inability to access such information or a delay in or failure of the transmission of the receipt or instruction or notification in connection therewith. Any past performance results shown for illustration example only are hypothetical and, have, and as such have inherent limitations and no representation is being made in the account will or is likely to achieve profits or losses similar to those shown. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. And then along those same lines, we're required to show you CFTC rule 4.41. I'm not going to go read through this whole one, but basically what it's telling you is if we're showing you examples from the past, obviously there's no guarantee that these are going to play out again in the future. Now that being said, I did another one of these webinars on Thursday. And then Friday, everything we talked about in the webinar, or everything you'll learn today, played out on Friday. And I'll actually show you the examples from Friday right after that. And it's we, we use these strategies every day in front of hundreds of people in the trading room. Wouldn't be doing that. Wouldn't be putting money on them if we didn't believe they actually worked. All right. Uh, Carolyn, there shouldn't be any music playing for the webinar at all. Um, you may, it may be on your end somewhere. So... Um, with those disclaimers out of the way, let's go ahead and jump in. Why do we want to play? Why do we want to trade bonds? Okay, why do we want to be involved in this market, and why are we doing a, a workshop specifically tailored to bonds? Well, a lot of times traders are looking for markets that they can trade that one have high liquidity, so you're not going to run into getting stuck in a position or placing a trade and having a lot of slippage. All right, or having really wide spreads. They have low manipulation. Um, now, you can argue bonds have a lot of manipulation because they're manipulated by the Fed. Yes, that's true, but the market's so big that not there's not going to be one trader that comes in there and just pushes the market around to run stops. Okay? And then also, they want a market that offers daily trade setups. So if you're a day trader, you want markets, obviously, that, that have a pretty good record of giving you different setups every day. All right? And that's where the bond market comes in. Bonds... They're great for any trader, no matter what size trader you are, whether you're trading a very small account or a very large account. In my opinion, bonds are a great market to trade. Uh, you can trade larger contract. You can trade 30-year bonds, which is $33 a tick, or you can go down and trade the 10-year the note, which is $15 a tick or $16 a tick, or you can trade the 5-year note, which is like $7.50 a tick or something. All right, so they trend very well also. So... They pick direction. Bonds normally will, will pick a direction, and they'll tend to stick with that direction most of the day, where a lot of times you'll see markets like crude oil or markets like the indices um, chop around a lot. They'll just go up and down, up and down, never really get anywhere. Well, bonds typically pick a direction, and they move that direction fairly well. Also, they offer really, really good reward risk ratios on a lot of the setups. And you always hear me, if you've been in the trading room or you've been in any of the other webinars I've done, I always talk about reward risk ratio and why it's so important. Well, reward risk ratios are great in bonds and they're really good, especially if you're a newer trader or you're trading a smaller account where you have to have one winner pay for several losses 
because it takes that huge weight off your shoulders and makes it so that, okay, I know the next winner is going to pay for all these losses, so I, I don't have to worry about them. Okay. They're also, as I said before, less manipulated because they're so big. Uh, they also really offer really, really good liquidity. Now, they're one of the biggest or most volume traded markets out there. So you're not going to run into problems of, I can't place my order because there's nobody filling it. Uh, you could be placing and trading 100 contracts and still only have one or two takes of slippage. Okay, so it's a really good market to trade. And I know traders out there that, that actually do that. They trade 100 contracts, 200 contracts, and they just scout the market over and over again, which I'll talk about that here in just a little bit. All right, the bond market is also one of the most liquid markets you can trade with setups occurring almost daily. It is a great tool for scalping and also a great tool for swing trading and catcher, catching bigger moves like you've seen in the past couple of days. If you've been in the trading room, you know we've talked about how bonds are setting up um, nice swing trades or had nice swing trades setting up earlier this week, and they played out perfectly all week long. I mean, just textbook perfect. So it's a great way, whether you're that intraday trader that goes, I don't want to have a lot of risk. I just want to get in and get right back out and take out one or two ticks at a time, scalping the market over and over again. That's fine. But they're also really good if you're the type of person that goes, I want to get in and I want to catch that thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollar contract move and hold it for a couple of days. That's fine as well because the setups work the exact same. And I'll show you that here in just a little bit. Bonds are also one of the easier markets, in my opinion, to read as they have a lot less false signals where the market <laughs> breaks out or has a false breakout and turns right back around and goes the opposite direction. Okay, so they're one of the easier markets to read. Um, they have really easily identifiable consolidation and trends, which we'll talk about how to how to read those trends. There's a question. Don't you think bonds have a low daily range compared to some forex pairs and indices? Yes, it has a lower daily range. However, if you, you consider that it's a lower daily range on a per tick basis, but if you look at how much money per tick it is, whereas a lot of currency pairs or something like crude oil is $10 a tick, Bonds are $33 a tick. So sure, it has a smaller daily range. You might only have 50 ticks, a 50 tick range in the day, which is a really big day. Um, but it's three times the size per tick than most of the other markets. Okay, so a dollar amount, it still moves roughly the same. Okay. So let's go ahead and without further ado, jump in with the fun stuff, the stuff that you wanna you're here for to learn how to trade the market a little bit more. So what we're going to be discussing today is trend identification and trading trend breakouts. And you go, okay, this is so basic, Thomas. Why are you teaching me trend identification, trend breakouts? Everybody knows this. Well, I'm going to hopefully teach it to you in a way that you've never really looked at it before and simplify this because one of the things I really, really like doing, one of the things I'm passionate about doing is taking the complex market, simplifying it down so anybody can understand it and show you how to do it. Okay, and that's what we're going to be doing here. All right, yeah, thirty-one twenty-five per tick. You're right, Ryan. A little over thirty dollars contract, or a little over thirty dollars per contract per tick. All right. So, in order to identify a trend, you first need to understand what the definition of a trend is. So, how do we define uptrend? How do we define downtrend? And how do we define everything outside of a trend? All right. From now on, an uptrend is identified as higher high plus higher low. So, look at it like this. All right. Look at it as an equation. Uptrend equals higher high plus higher low. So just like any other equation, let's say two equals one plus one. If you get rid of one half of that equation, two does not equal one. So that becomes not true. So with a trend, okay, when we're looking at a trend, we have to have for an uptrend, higher high plus higher low. All right. Same thing for the downtrend. Look about look at it as a trend, downtrend as an equation, downtrend equals lower high plus lower low, just like two equals one plus one. If you do not have both sides of that equation, two does not equal one. All right, so keep that in mind. It has to have both sides of the equation to equal a downtrend, lower high plus lower low. Everything else outside of higher high and higher low being uptrend and lower high, lower low being downtrend, anything else that's happening is considered consolidation or reversal. Okay? Now, when, you're, when I'm talking about higher highs and higher lows or lower highs and lower lows, what am I referring to? What I'm referring to is this right here. Market moves up and then pulls back and then moves up again. Then it pulls back and then moves up again and pulls back and moves up again. Okay? 
And you can see each one of these, this high right here is higher than this high. So we're going to go high number one, high number two, high number three, and high number four. Okay. Then we're going to go low number one, low number two, low number three, and we'll go up here and go low number four. Well, you always go one in relation to the previous. So we go, okay, two is higher than one, two is higher than one. So we're in an uptrend. Three is higher than two, three is higher than two. So we're still in an uptrend. Four is higher than three, four is higher than three. You're still in an uptrend. And then you come over here and you go, okay, we break down. So now what we've done is we've broken below the previous pivot low. We bounce back up. We start coming down again. And then you're back on downtrend because you have lower highs and lower lows. And you're going, okay, um, let's go high number five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight. So we're going to go, okay, well, five is lower than four. So that's one half of the equation. And then as soon as we bounce up and put in a six, which is lower than five, as of that point right there, you're now in a downtrend. Does that make sense to everybody? Because six is lower than five and five is lower than four. And then we go seven is lower than six, six is lower than five, eight is lower than seven, seven is lower than six, eight is lower than seven, et cetera. And you're in a downtrend. All righty? So that's the definition of a trend. That's how you read the trend from now on. So let's take a look at what that looks like on a chart because obviously it's not as clear cut as this on a chart, but it's still just as simple. So let's look at this chart. We're going to start, this is just the other day. This vertical line here is the change of the day, okay? So we're going to have a high here, and we're going to have a low here. Then we're going to have a high here, we're going to have a low here. And then a high here and a low here. All right, by looking at that, which way is the trend going? By the way, I'm going to quiz you guys throughout this, and I'm going to teach you things, and I'm going to ask you to point them out. So make sure you're paying attention. Exactly. This is an uptrend. Why? Because we have higher highs and we have higher lows. So this trend is moving higher. And we continue to put in high and low and high and low and high and low. So when you look at it that way, now does this become a little bit easier to see which way the trend is moving? Now we're just looking, all we're focusing on are the pivot points. All we're looking at are the pivot points and just go like this. Now, does that look familiar to what we were just talking about? Pretty simple. All right. Now, a lot of people are asking, well, what about the time frame? What time frame do you look at? What time frame do you look at? One thing you need to understand about a trend, a trend is time frame dependent. Okay. So a trend depends. You'll have uptrends, for example, on a 500 tick chart where you're having a downtrend on a daily chart. Okay. If you're looking at a 500 tick chart, then you're referencing a 500 tick trend. If you're looking at a five-minute chart, you're referencing a five-minute trend. If you're looking at a daily chart, you're referencing a daily trend. And I'll show you examples of a bunch of different time frames here in just a minute. So one of the great things about this, now I'm not here to tell you that multi-time frame analysis is bad or anything because I actually teach multi-time frame analysis. And it's going to be one of the focuses of the workshop at the end of the month. However, one of the great things about what I'm teaching you today about reading trends and reading breakouts is that it's time frame dependent. It doesn't matter what the other time frames are doing because it, all that matters is the time frame you're referencing. Okay? Make sense? And all the examples I'm going to show you today are on a 30-year treasury bond. So let's take a look at another example. This is another 500 tick chart and bonds. All right, so let's start on the left-hand side of the chart. We're going to have a low and then a high and then a low and then a high. Which way is that trend moving? Exactly, moving in an uptrend. And then we put in a low and then a high. Now what's happening? Has the trend reversed yet as of this point right here? Has the trend reversed yet as of that point right there? Ooh, you guys are good. Nope, hasn't reversed yet. Why hasn't it reversed yet? <laughs> I love it when you guys are paying attention because you guys got it right. Exactly. The second half of the equation. You haven't put in the lower low yet. So as soon as we come down and we break through that low, so down there, so this is point number one, and this is point number two. Have we changed trend 
at point number two. Bingo. Exactly. So you now put in a lower low plus a lower high. So we have lower high here. And as soon as we break through the previous pivot low, we now have a lower low. So we're in a downtrend. Now, one thing we want to do when a market changes trend. Okay, there's a couple things we do. First, as soon as the market changes trend, there's a couple things we do. Or as soon as we put in this lower high within the context of an uptrend. First thing we do is we draw a trend line going across the highs. Okay. Now that trend line doesn't need to go on forever. All right. It just needs to go right around the first few minutes after that trend has changed. If the trend is going to stay bearish, that line is our line in the sand. All right. It should not go back above that trend line. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a support level here. Normally we don't trade support breaks. We're not going to just buy on a break of the high or sell on a break of the low. However, when the trend first changes, you can buy on the break of the high or sell on the break of the low. Okay, so when it first changes, you can. So this is a potential short opportunity. Alrighty. And then the line in the sand is it shouldn't go back above this trend line if it's going to continue lower. So this shouldn't come back up and break there and go back up. Because if it does that, then that means we're back in an uptrend. All right, so let's continue on reading the trend. We have lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, higher low. All right, so when we start bouncing back up from this higher low, what do we do? We draw our trend line. We draw our trend line. And we break to a higher high. Okay, so you have a potential long on this break of this high here, right? You have a potential long here on the trend reversal. However, trend doesn't follow through. What happens? It turns right back around. And where's that line in the sand? Right here. So that means we're selling right there. And we catch the down move to resume the downtrend. Okay? John, we're not discussing that today. Sure thing, Mike. I'll try to get to it later. Let's take a look at another example. All righty. Let's take a look at another example. Um, this is on a daily basis. So those were both 500 tick examples. This is on a daily price chart. Let's start reading the trend. We have a low and then a high, then a higher low and a higher high, and then a higher low and a lower high. What happens now? Come on, everybody should know it. We just covered it. We draw our trend line. We draw our trend line going across the highs. That's the line in the sand. As long as it doesn't break that trend line, it should continue to go lower. But what happens? We break the trend line and we resume the uptrend. They put in higher lows and higher highs all the way up. They put in a lower high. What do we do? We draw a trend line right across the highs. What happens? Resumes the uptrend. Now, this is interesting. This is what we just talked about um, on Thursday. We were talking about this because this is what's playing out right now. And this is basically a live example of how this system works. So where are we at here? We're putting in lower highs and we're putting in higher lows. So what does that mean? Always use the wicks, Rex. Always use looking at wicks. means we're in consolidation. Exactly. It means we're in consolidation. But what do we just do right here? And this is what we talked about on Thursday for those of you that were in that webinar. What were we doing right here? We're putting in a higher low. We're putting in a higher low. Here's the resistance. Where are bonds at right now? Bonds are way up here right now. <laughs> All right, and here, I'll pull it up and I'll show you what I mean. This is Trade Station. This is a bond chart. And this is where bonds are at. Way the heck up here. Why? Because we put in a higher low and broke out to a higher high. And we're back in an uptrend. And what do we say watch for all week long? Watch for bonds to break to an uptrend. Because we were looking at this as a little range bound here. 
we're watching for the consolidation of, of this range bound. It broke out on a Wednesday and Thursday night. We talked about, hey, we expect it to go up because it's broken out of here. It's put in the higher low. We expect it to go hit a higher high. So we expect it to go break this high there. And so far, it absolutely has. Okay. Now, can you guys see how simple this is, though, to be reading this? Because this isn't complicated. All you're doing is reading the price chart. All we're doing is reading the price movement, reading where the market's actually trading. All right, let's go ahead and continue on. Here's another example. This is bonds on a 120-minute chart. Let's look at our, our pivot points. Low, high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. Pull back down. We put to break into a lower low. Bounce back up, put in a lower high, and then we put in a higher low, and then a higher high, and then a higher low, and a higher high. And we break back down to a lower low, and we break back up to a higher high. So what's that mean? So this is uptrend, right? This is consolidation. This is uptrend. This is consolidation. And what is this over here? This is all consolidation until we come over and we put in a higher low here compared to the last low there. And we bounce and put in a lower high here. And then we come back down. And what's that? That's the break. Where's the trend line go? Trend line would have been going across this high right there. Should never have broken that, which it didn't end up doing until way over here, which doesn't matter. Remember, it should have happened right away. Where's that first support break? Right there for the run lower. Okay. So now you're looking at all this and you're going, okay, well, that's great. You're talking about how to identify the trend. That's that's cool. You can look at highs and lows and see, okay, the trend's going up, the trend's going down. That's pretty simple. But where do we actually get into the trade? Well, one of the best breakout trades that we can take is a trend breakout, okay? It's when the trend first changes from bullish to bearish or bearish to bullish, okay? Normally, we do not want to trade the breakout of a previous high or a previous low. So what do I mean by that? Well, with the markets moving up like this, right? This happens to so many traders. They're going to go and they go and they buy as soon as we break this high. And they're going to go along right here, only to have it turn around, pull back, and stop them out right here. In and then out. And then it goes right back around and goes right back up. And they the trend stayed intact. It stayed bullish. And they were on the right side of the market, but their timing was way off on their entry. Okay? So what we want to do is we don't want to be trading those breakouts higher to higher highs or breakouts to lower lows, except for when the trend first starts to change, okay? And that's when we do this. We pull back. We're still higher highs and higher lows. We bounce back up. We put in a lower high here, and then that short is the break of this low because that first trend change, a lot of times you're going to get a really quick snap reaction where the market rips, okay? And that's that's bearish example. Bullish example would be the exact opposite. It would be we're moving down lower highs, lower lows. And then the market comes down, puts in a higher low, and snaps that and breaks that high. And that's your long. Everybody understand? Again, we're looking at, when we're looking at the highs and lows, we're looking at the wicks. The highest high or the lowest low that the price traded, not the body of the candle. All right, so let's take a look at what this looks like. So here we were in the uptrend, right? Higher lows, higher highs. This is just the this is the same chart we were looking at before, okay? And then look, we put in a low. And then what do we do there? Put in our lower high. So where's the trade? The break of that low. And then you snap straight down. Okay? Where's the line in the sand? The line in the sand is the trend line going across the top. You see that? Is that clear to everybody? Good deal. Here's another example. This is on the 500 tick chart again. And the reason, by the way, I use the 500 tick chart a lot is because it's my favorite time frame for intraday trading on bonds, 500 ticks. If you're on toss, it's a 250 tick, basically. So... We're in a downtrend, okay? We put in a high here, 
They put in a higher low here. So what does that mean? There's a couple things we do. What do we do? <laughs> exactly. We draw our trend line. So we draw our trend line for the line in the sand. It should never cross back down below that trend line. And we draw a resistance level on the previous pivot high for the breakout. What happens? We break the resistance for the long. And you get that knee-jerk reaction where it snaps straight up. Where should it never go? It should never come back down here and break this trend line. Because if it does, then we're expecting it to resume the down move. Making sense? A lot of things go into it, Arthur. I don't want to get into that today. Everybody following along so far? Can you use channels to see breakouts? Uh, you could use channels. I'm not sure what you're, what you're defining as channels, though. <clears throat> All right. So, again, the main thing I want you to understand here, and the main thing I want you to see, it's a lot easier when I draw it like this, is we're looking for it to come down. So we were in the downtrend. And we put in the higher low. And we snapped to that higher high. All right. Everybody understand? You see this exact same pattern here playing out right down here. Can you guys see how that works together? This seems too simple. <laughs> yep. Like I said, I like taking the really complex things and making them super understandable make it so anybody can read it and go hey that that actually makes a lot of sense and all we're doing is reading the price chart and if you if you don't believe me just go back and look at these setups over time and look at how many times this happened so here we go there's that low and then the bounce and the higher low and the break higher and that's point one point two point three and then breakouts point four so we go like this, point 0.1 down here, point 0.2 right here, point 0.3 right here, and breakouts point 0.4. So you have two choices, micro trend continuation or breakout out entry. Exactly, Joe. And now I'm not here to tell you that every single one is going to follow through. Okay, because every single one does not follow through. Nothing in trading is 100%. Anybody that tells you that they are, there that it is, is most likely lying to you. Well, actually, I should say they are lying to you because I don't think anybody's 100%. <laughs> For example, you have this right here. We had a low here. Now, <clears throat> now this wasn't ideal because these were equally low lows. It was not a higher low. Okay, it was equally low lows, but then it snapped to the break high. Now, what did it do, though? It broke to the high, but then it started putting in these really long wicks to the upside. And you're going, hey, long wicks to the upside, that shows a lack of willingness to rally. So we're going to get out of it. Look at the difference on when this one broke out. Look how strong of a breakout we had. Look at look at that nice strong close. And we're going to talk about timing entries um, in the workshop. So we're going to talk about how to know when the breakout's confirmed or, or false breakout in the workshop. All right, here's another example. This is bonds on the 120. So what I want you to see though is we had a high and then a low and then a higher high and then a higher low. Okay. So if this is a bearish breakout, we're looking for it to come up, put in a lower high, and snap, break the low, and break to a lower low. So we're going to go point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3. Okay, so point 0.1, point 0.2, and then breaking that low is point 0.3. Do you see it? Because like I said, it's a little easier to see it when I'm drawing it on a line. It's a little more different because you got to kind of interpret the chart. But you put in point 0.2 is lower than this high up here. So we put in the lower high, and then we snap through the low to trigger the lower low in the breakout. Here's another example. Here's a low, and then a high, and then a higher low. There's your resistance. You pop through it, and then rally. Like I said, not every single trade is going to run for forever, but in the workshop, I'm going to teach you how to trail your stop to stay in for the bigger moves and save your money if it doesn't, doesn't run.
All right. You said real time, you tend to forget. Yeah, it takes practice. And that's, I mean, real time example is the daily setup that we've been talking about for the past several days. And the one that we talked about on Thursday said, watch for it to go higher on Friday. All right. Thomas, do you not look at hourly or 30 minute charts to confirm the trend direction? Or if you're day trading, do you not care what the higher time frames are doing? Yeah, the, the beauty of this strategy is, this, is its simplicity. You don't have to worry about all the other time frames. All you got to do is worry about the time frame you're analyzing. Because a trend is time frame dependent. It depends on what time frame you're analyzing. And it'll vary. You could have a 500 tick uptrend within the context of a daily downtrend. What specific bar pattern qualifies as the measurement of higher high, lower high, lower high, lower low? For example, you're using pin bars. What do you turn when tests of peaks or valleys are occurring? You're looking at pivot points, Ryan. You're looking at pivot points. So all you're looking for is for the market to have gone up, turned around and pulled back, turned around and gone back up, turned around and pulled back, turned around and gone back up. Okay, so you're just referencing pivots. Thomas, is this a futures bond chart? Yep, this is futures. Yes, you can trade bonds on, on you can trade ETF. Um, I don't remember the bond ETF off the top of my head, though. TLT, that's it. Yep, thanks. TLT is bonds ETF. Trade the exact same way. And, and again, this, this what I'm teaching you right now works on any market. You can re read any market the same way, reading the trend. It's just I really like it for bonds because it works really well for bonds because bonds are one of the simpler markets to read because they trend really well. All right. Tom, is this futures bond chart? If so, I uh, already answered that. Are the pivots determined by the top of the wick or the top of the body? Top of the wick. So let's take a look. Let's go through. This is Friday. Okay, this is Friday's price action. So this is yesterday after non-farm payroll. All right. Here's our high. Here's our low. Here's a higher high. Here's a higher low. Here's non-farm payroll. Obviously, we don't want to be getting into anything down here before non-farm payroll because we're not gamblers. We don't go try to bet on the market before a big announcement. But what happens? We break out, we put in a higher high and a higher low and a higher high. Now, if you were in the trade room, you saw me do this. You saw me do this exact thing. So we came down, we put in a higher low, then that lower low or that lower high and lower low. So we started to pull back down. Now, we're not selling right here because bonds are way up off of news. What are we doing, though? We're drawing that trend line. And our trade is the break of that trend line to resume the up move. Yep, you trade the time frame you're analyzing. Yep, David, you can absolutely use a pivot trend indicator. So here's your breakout, and then you continue with your uptrend. And this is, literally, this was yesterday. If you were in the trade room, you saw me draw that trend line, that exact trend line, and say, if it breaks the trend line, we were looking for it to resume the up move. You see how simple this is? You see how the thing, the thing that's great about it is the simplicity. So when it breaks and comes back down, where do you put your stops? That's a good question, Diane. Your stop's going below the low of the previous price bar on the breakout. So if this is our trend line and this is our breakout bar, we're going to go right down here with our stop. All right, but again, the workshop is where we're going to get into a lot more detail on all this stuff because we'll have more time to discuss it all. Stop placement, trailing stops, exits, all that. Here's another example. Again, this is bonds right now. This is what the bond chart looks like. Lows, high, higher low, break to the higher high. Even if you didn't trade this little consolidation breakout here. Even if you didn't take the trade, you go, you know what, non-farm payroll is coming up next week. I don't want to mess with any of this stuff in here. I'm going to wait until non-farm payroll coming up on Friday. Well, you wait till non-farm payroll, that means you still got long right there and took out an entire point to the upside in a, an hour. Okay, I don't understand why you picked it along at non-farm payroll if there were lower highs and lower lows. Because remember, when the trend changes, okay, where after the trend changes, you draw that trend line. That trend line is a line in the sand. If it breaks that trend line, we're resuming the up move. 
We're operating under the assumption that it's resuming the original trend. The original trend was bullish. So this becomes what we call a micro trend or a small trend, a small counter trend trend before we resume the underlying. So you break that trend line. We're operating under the assumption that it's resuming the underlying. It bounces up, retests the trend line for one last kiss, and then takes off. Or same for the 10-year note. Yep, it is a bull flag. Absolutely, Sean. All right, so this is what's coming up in the workshop at the end of the month. All right, we're going to talk about trading multi-time multi frame setups. So this is a really simple, simplified strategy of trading one time frame. But you can increase your probabilities of success and catching those much bigger moves by using multi-time frame analysis. All right, we're going to talk about identifying high probability entries on bond breakouts. So how do you know where these high probability breakouts are coming from? And how do we know which ones we want to be taking, which ones we don't want to be taking? We're going to talk about maximizing reward risk ratios in bonds. Okay, so we're going to talk about how to get the most out of our trades with the smallest amount of risk. We're going to talk about proper stop placement and trade management. We're going to be talking about trading bonds with correlated market analysis. So looking at what the indices are doing and saying, okay, indices, for example, have a negative correlation with bonds. So we can expect bonds to start to consolidate or look for bonds to break out because indices are breaking down type of thing. We also have a bonus where I'll be talking about a bond scalping strategy for quick profits. So for those of you that go, I don't want to try to catch these bigger moves. I don't care about taking 10, 20, 30 ticks out. I want to go get in and get back out with two or three ticks at the most. Well, that's perfectly fine. There's a really good scalping strategy you can use for bonds where you can trade 100 contracts and make $3,000 per tick. And you take out one tick at a time over and over and over again. Okay. This workshop is coming up on June 30th from 8 to 10 p.m. It's only $297. So think about that. The workshop is $297. Bonds are $31.50 per tick. And the average trade is a 10 tick trade. So you're averaging $310 on the average winner. This is less than your one trade of profit. Okay. This is June 30th, 8, 10 p.m. You can order by going to valuecharts.com forward slash fed. Valuecharts.com forward slash fed. All right. That's going to bring you to this page right here. All you got to do is put in your first name, last name, billing address, put in the email address. This is important. The email address that you want to receive the link to log into the workshop on. Okay. Your credit card number and then place your order and you are set. All right. Now, not only that, but in the next two hours, if you order in the next two hours, we're going to have a drawing for the MQ Momentum Indicator. So everybody that signs up the next two hours will be entered to win the MQ Momentum Indicator uh, for free, which is my absolute favorite tool to use. All right. MQ, never trade without MQ Momentum. All right. If you need help signing up, send an email to support at valuecharts.com or you can give us a call, 919-935-0010. All right. Now, let me answer some questions for you. Do you use market profile for trading bonds? Nope. I don't use market profile. What highs, sorry, there's a lot of questions coming through. So if I miss your question, I apologize. I'm not trying to miss it. I'm trying to answer all of them I can, but there's a lot of them coming through. Um, what highs do you use to draw your trend line? And do you redraw your trend line as things change? Uh, you're looking at the, the, so when you're talking about, I assume you're, you're talking about this right here. So if the market is going up and we, we put in this lower high, we start coming down. We take these peak number one and peak number two, that lower high, and then we draw our trend line. We don't adjust it. That's that line in the sand. All right. Never short on a break like that. Just join at a low risk entry or be flat. Yep. I, like I said, we don't, we don't just buy or sell breaks of highs and lows. It has to be a specific break on the trend reversal. And you don't want to be going completely counter trend to a market like non-farm payroll day when we were ripping through the roof. That's why I said we wouldn't want to take the short because the market was as a whole bullish. And that's one of the, that's one of the ways or one of the reasons we use multi time frame analysis because that's where it comes into play. We'll look at longer time frames and say, look, every other time frame out there is bullish. We don't want to take shorts. Do you pay attention to what the Fed does like interest rates or just look at price action? Price action. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say it doesn't matter what the Fed does because that would be ridiculous. Obviously, it does. And we want to know when they're getting ready to have announcements, when they're getting ready to change things. However, 
the price action is still going to give you where your setups are. It's still going to tell you when to get in. The trend is still going to be intact no matter what they do. So I'm price action trader. I assume that the workshop will be recorded. Is that right? I'll be out of town the 30th. Absolutely. It will be recorded. Uh, you can watch the recording 100 times if you want. So you'll get the recording once it's over. Do you use indicators while trading bonds? Yep, I absolutely do use indicators. But for today's strategy, I was trying to show you a price action strategy that's really simple. Which markets pos uh, correlate positively and negatively with bonds? You have all the, all the different bond markets you can be trading um, with positive correlation. So 30-year bond, 10-year bond, or 10-year note, 5-year note, etc. Uh, you can also be trading gold has a loose, a loose correlation with, with bonds because they're both somewhat inversely correlated to the indices. Um, do you use the same tick for both the 30s and the 10s? Uh, no, 30-year bonds, you use a 500 tick. 10-year note, you use a 1,000 tick. Do you bond trade only around Fed days or every day? You're normally going to have setups every single day. Yeah, the sign-up link is valuecharts.com forward slash F-E-D. Valuecharts.com forward slash Fed. Uh, will this be available to buy uh, later at this price? I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that, Bob. A lot, we'll normally take our old workshops and make them on demand and allow you to purchase them on demand for the same price. However, if you're getting it on demand, you don't get to ask the questions during it. So I highly recommend coming to the live one if you can. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, I'm not showing a chart right now. I'm just showing the workshop screen. Dan, I don't want to do that right now because I don't want to get off topic. In the workshop, I will be more than happy to do that and show you. Or if you come to the trade room and ask me there, I'll show you. But I don't want to, I don't want to distract from what we've talked about today. We do have a live trading room that trades bonds. Yep, absolutely. If you're not a member of the trading room, who here is a member of the trading room or who here is not a member of the trading room? If you're not a member of the trading room, not a member of Value Charts where you get all the daily videos and stuff and you can go back and watch, hey, Thomas has been saying buy bonds in the past three, four days. Go to valuecharts.com forward slash go. Valuecharts.com forward slash go. You can get a one month trial for seven bucks. Um. Well, I explained toss setup in the seminar. Not sure what you mean, Charles. The The workshop's not going to be platform specific. It's going to be bond specific. So it's, the workshop is all about trading bonds. Yep, there's a trading room. So you can come to the trading room and you can, after the workshop, you can come to the trading room and ask questions all day long. And that's one of the th things I like about our trading room. And I think one of our, one of the things that set us apart in our trading rooms is we sit there and take the time to answer questions. I mean, probably answer 400 questions throughout the day. The um, the trade room is open from 8 a.m. Eastern to um, 12 o'clock Eastern. Yes, Sean, absolutely. Do you raise your stops quickly on favorable moves because of 31.25 per tick? Yes and no, Rick. Depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for the bigger move or if you're looking to just lock in the gains as you're moving. And it really depends. Every trader is different. We'll talk about that in the workshop. On toss for the tick setting, uh, like I said, on toss, you're using about 250 tick, but keep in mind, they're all different. All platforms are different. You're in. Good deal, good deal, Arthur. Glad to have you with us. Look forward to meeting you or seeing you in the workshop. Yes, Jamie, absolutely do. Do you use the bull and bear flag indicator with ETF bond charts, CLT? Yep, you absolutely can use bull and bear flag indicator for there. Bull and bear flag indicator works great for bonds. How do you determine which bond to trade, 30-year, 10-year, et cetera? Depends on your account size. If you're trading a smaller account, you're going to trade 10-year note or the 5-year note. If you're trading a larger account, you can trade 30-year bonds. Why do you say TOSS is 250 ticks and other platforms 500 ticks? I thought ticks are the same in all charts and all platforms. If so, I'm using TOSS as opposed to use 500 ticks as well. Nope, ticks are not the same on all platforms. Each platform calculates ticks differently. So if you pull up a tick chart in TOSS and I pull up a tick chart in TradeStation, they're going to look completely different. If you want them to get close to each other, you have to use a 250 tick and toss, and that's still not going to make it look the same, but it'll make it closer. After a break, do you look for a flag to see if the last kiss? Yep, absolutely, Mike. Fed only controls short-term rate, long-term is supply and demand. Yep. When the Fed raised a quarter percent 
30-year bond still rallied, and long rates are lower, flat yield curve. Exactly, Kelly, and that's why I said we, we always look at we always look at the price action. The price action is going to tell you where it's going to go. You get so many false false things from news. It's just not worth not worth using, in my opinion. Workshop is two hours. Workshop's two hours from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern. It'll probably go a little bit longer than that, to be honest with you. Bonds are nice, but they've been taking my money lately. See? That's why you need to be in the workshop. And all the indicators work on TradeStation, IndiaTrader, MultiCharts, Thinkorswim, eSignal, Sierra, Infinity. A lot of them. 250 and 500. Yep, for toss. In the trading room, great trading. Good deal, Dancil. 11th hour two. I'm in. Got the crude oil workshop as well. Awesome, Gene. Yeah, the, there's, an, there's a... When you get the workshop, there's a discount offered for the uh, black gold workshop if you want to go learn how to trade crude oil as well. That's a really good one. I like, the, I like the workshops where I just focus on one specific chart or one specific market because then we can get into a lot of detail on trading the ins and outs of that workshop or of that market. So there is an opportunity to get the black gold workshop as well if you get bonds. Is TOSS going to futures tab for description? Uh, would you use 500? Uh, yeah, on TradeStation, I use a 500 tick. Thanks, Tom. Good webinar. You're very welcome, Jimmy. Is Ninja 500 tick? Bill, I believe Ninja is about about the same 500 tick as TradeStation. Do you only trade bonds with tick chart? No, Phyllis, I do not only trade bonds with tick chart. But day trading, I like the tick chart most. Tom, see you at the workshop. Good deal, Howard. See you there. Nice job. Looking forward to the bond trade setup. Me too. See you there, Howard. Thanks for signing up. Uh, what is the MQ Mintum and how does it fit into trading bonds? MQ Mintum is similar. It's an oscillator similar to an MACD, but it's a bit different. Uh, but it's my favorite momentum oscillator out there. And we'll, I'll teach you how to use both MACD and MQ Mintum in the bond trading workshop. Yes, it is, Jamie. Smart Money figures out micro... Our macro implications first. Trade the charts. Yep, exactly. Hi, Thomas. Did you say black gold would come with the bond workshop? I already paid for the indicator. No, it doesn't come with the workshop. It's it's offered at a discounted rate, though, for everybody that purchases the bond trading workshop. Uh, what's the deadline for sign up for the class? Like I said, try to sign up in the next two hours, and you get entered to win uh, that drawing, but you have uh, the next couple of days to sign up at that 297 price. All right, everybody, that is it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, I try to always teach you something if you're coming out here spending time with me. Uh, so hopefully you learned something. Hopefully it helps you out. As I mentioned before, you can apply this logic to any time frame or any market you want to trade. They all move. They all You can read the price charts the same. Okay. So that is it for today, though. I will see you all on Monday in the trading room, hopefully. And hopefully also in the workshop on the 30th. Again, June 30th, 8 to 10 p.m., valuecharts.com forward slash Fed. It's going to be a lot of fun focusing on trading on trading bonds specifically. And bonds are a great market to trade. If you're, if you're the type of person that's out there going, I need that one market. I just want to find one market to focus on. Bonds are a great market to focus on. And like I said, the workshop's designed to take you from bond trading zero to bond trading hero. So... Have a good weekend, everyone. I'll see you all in the trade room next week. I'll see you in the, mint or in the workshop in a few weeks. And until next time, happy trading.